Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Peter Sacco is a professional psychologist who has written an important book about anger. Is it okay for Christians to feel anger? What are the five types of anger? Why did Jesus get angry? Here's Peter Secco. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we have a live interview with my new friend from Niagara-on-the-Lake, which is right near my beloved hometown of Buffalo. Uh, welcome to the program, Dr. Peter Sacco, who's written 30 books, including, what's the one we're gonna talk about today? Peter, hold that up. <laughs> what is your anger type? So welcome to the program. Please introduce yourself to our audience. It's a pleasure to be here, uh, Dr. Chaps, and God bless everybody tuning in. And I hope God is smiling and shining upon everybody today. Well, anyways, uh, a little bit about me. I uh, start, my career basically started out as a psychologist. Um, that's why I went to school for it. But even before I became that, I was a, a singer and a guitarist in a band, and I had written short stories, went to school, um, got something real in terms of a career goes of my parents always said you got to get something that's honest and real so i became a psychologist which my goal was to really become a psychology professor and that's what i've been doing since i believe 1996 and i've you know loved it i've taught at all levels of university and colleges um and my background my specialty is criminal psychology and addiction psychology wow well my experience with canadians is they are excessively polite. So uh, when you talk about anger issues, you can't be talking about your fellow Canadians, can you? Oh, you know what, Dr. Chaps, I think everybody is prone to anger. You know, I, I get asked this all of the time uh, from clients. I did a lot of work with anger management support groups. And the question always was, is how do we get rid of our anger, doc? And my answer is always like, we don't get rid of our anger, nor should we get rid of it. Just like we should not get rid of joy. We should not get rid of happiness because these are normal human emotions. Rather, it's how we channel and use emotions like anger. I can be honest and upfront and tell you, I used to use it and motivate me when I played sports. If somebody took a hockey stick across my ankles, it made me want to play stronger and harder. Um, and same thing with uh, my career. Uh, writing books, uh, do producing and directing films uh, for film festivals and being a TV show host uh, as well as a radio host for stuff. Where in the past, folks told me, you're not good enough or you don't have what it takes because you need to have, quote unquote, an educational background in this. I've gone to school for film, radio or whatever, which I never did for any of the above. I just self-taught it, self-learned it. And the rejection in a roundabout way motivated me. I remember a colleague once said, um, instead of getting angry and getting really upset, success is the best revenge. Therefore, I don't really believe in revenge. I just believe in the success part of it. Well, that's a healthy response. I mean, um, it, your book talks about five different types of anger. Uh, is there a righteous anger or unrighteous anger? I'm gonna boil it down to those two. You know, one of the angers that I actually cover in, in it, Dr. Chaps, is moralistic anger. And let's be realistic. There are times, you know, where we literally have to crucify our flesh from going out and doing something stupid. However, I tend to believe that moralistic anger is justified in terms of acting. And you know, this is where we get into the slippery, slippery slope, where it's like, okay, how much do we really have to turn the other cheek? And you know, we see that uh, Christ in the Bible got angry and expressed his anger when he overturned the money changers' tables. He showed us that anger is justified in some situations, and. 
you look at what's going on now. Um, the music video that I created, we partnered and we did stuff with to bring an awareness for the trafficking, of, human trafficking of people and kids. And what does it say in the Bible about harming the kids? You'd be better suited by hanging a millstone around your neck and literally bye bye. Yeah, so Jesus was angry about child abuse, and, and I am too. Uh, you know, there's a, a great movie everyone should go see, uh, The Sound of Freedom. It talks about that issue and child trafficking. Uh, that should cause outrage, not just in us as, as parents or, or pastors, but also the government ought to be angry about this. And I think they're taking appropriate responses in some, t in some places. Um, what would Jesus do and, and how did he express anger towards sin? You know, I, I think Christ handled it perfectly. And a colleague of mine who, well, an acquaintance, God rest his soul, is Dr. Robert Schuler from the Hour of Power Crystal Cathedral. And I remember Bob Schuler, because Bob Schuler, I believe, started out as a psychologist and became a pastor. And I remember Bob used to be saying is that literally Jesus Christ, in human terms, in some ways, was one of the greatest psychologists as well, too, because he empathized with humans. And he realized that deep down, we are all human beings prone to emotions and prone to having, I guess, fleshy outbursts. So when it comes to situations where you look at anger, is it anger retaliatory because you want to get even with somebody and it's being done out of revenge. And I believe in that case there, you know, the Bible teaches us, let God be our vindicator and not ourselves. However, when it comes an, a righteous anger in the protection of our families, of our, you know, kids, I believe in that point there, I believe all bets are off with God and God, you know, empowers us to go and protect his, you know, further and protect his kingdom. Amen to that. Okay, hold up that book again. I'm gonna mention your website, peterandrewsacco.com, S-A-C-C-O.com. And what's your anger type? There are five types of angers. Uh, and, and one of the other books he's written is, what's your anger type for Christians? <laughs> it, it tell, helping Christians understand. Let's take a short break. More with Dr. Peter Sacco right after this. Do you have Muslim friends or neighbors living in America? We want to give them Bibles in their native language and you can help. We're making a free offer to you, the viewing audience, to help give away free Bibles to Muslims. If you want us to send a copy of the New Testament for yourself or a friend in any of the following languages, we would love to send it to you free of charge. We've got an Arabic New Testament available, Farsi New Testament, Turkish New Testament, the Kurdish New Testament in Kurmanji, the Kurdish New Testament, Sorani, and the Dari Gospel of John. All you need to do is contact our office by phone, 719-574-5900. Again, that's 719-574-5900. Or send an email request to hope at vopg.org. Again, that's hope, H-O-P-E, at vopg.org. And we'll process your request right away. God bless you. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, Jesus taught the parable about sowing the seed, and you don't want it wasted. You want it to grow with 30, 60, 100 fold for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you three mission areas that we're doing here at Pray in Jesus Name. I think our charity does more with less than any other charity I know. We are fertile seed. For example, number one, we pray in millions of television homes every day or every weekend on eight networks, we have 2.5 billion home TV impressions every month. The second area, we feed orphans and children. In some of the poorest slums overseas, we're building a new vocational school, we're digging wells, and we're serving the poor when you give to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, we defend religious freedom, especially for our troops and our chaplains. We've now helped send five million petitions to Congress We've helped change bad laws or policies in 13 states and four times in federal law. You know my story as a former Navy chaplain, standing up for the right to pray in Jesus' name and defending religious freedom. Would you donate today? In fact, we want you to come up monthly pledge sponsor. 
When you visit PrayInJesusName.org, on the right side, click the Monthly Pledge Sponsor button at PrayInJesusName.org. Your monthly gift will help change the world in Jesus' name. Maybe you've enjoyed our program and you're wondering, how can we support Dr. Chaps with our tithes and offerings? We've made it so easy right now. You don't even need to go to the website. Just use your smartphone and text the word DONATE to 720-573-0305. You don't even have to get out of your chair. Just pick up your smartphone right now and text the word DONATE to 720-573-0305 and you will help us bring you these programs. God bless you in Jesus' name. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Peter Sacco, a Christian psychologist from Ontario, Canada. Uh, Peter, there was a couple of scriptures about anger that, that sort of exist in tension with each other, right? Um, and I want you to compare and contrast for me and help me understand. When Jesus overturned the tables of the money changers, Jesus expressed the holy human emotion of anger, but it was a righteous anger. Compare that to uh, when Paul warns us, in your anger do not sin and give the devil a foothold. So there is, there is a sinful kind of anger that, you know, obviously when we're violent towards people or when we are uh, committing crimes, that, that's unhealthy and that's sinful anger. Uh, how did Jesus avoid that? I, that's a great question, Dr. Chaps, and I believe part of it was, is I believe Christ followed that up with basically, you have been weighed in the balances. So when you look at that, I believe Christ was looking at it in terms of from a judicial perspective, where if you really do look at the law, um, based on the Code of Hammurabi, which is basically coming from the Ten Commandments, which is respecting and loving humans and being assertive, that is, getting what it is that you want, even if it's the law, but respecting the rights and freedoms of other people. Now, if you go to Paul's instance where Paul is talking, I believe Paul is referring it to more from a flesh standpoint where we become our own vindicators. Or we believe that when we are angry, rather, you, you, you can't psychologically rational be rational or rationalize things when you are caught up in the heat of the moment. I think this is what Paul was warning about, that basically cool down, pray about it, you know, we're taught through Proverbs. It's the greatest, you know, Solomon teaches basically what great wisdom is, and that's basically keeping a cool head. And I think this is the difference between Christ and Paul. Christ is looking at it from a judicial perspective about letting justice have its course, and Paul very similarly where he's saying, let God be your vindicator and don't go do it out of anger and rage. And basically, if you look at it, Dr. Chaps, it's no different from lust. We are not crucifying the flesh, rather we're giving into the sin, sin and temptation of the flesh. You know, that's uh, an interesting segue to a similar topic, but there is holy lust and there is sinful lust. Uh, for example, Jesus said before having the Last Supper, oh, how I have lusted to have this dinner with you. Now, he wasn't craving food in a sinful way like I do sometimes, gluttony, right? Uh, but he was looking forward, desiring the fellowship of his brothers um, in a final way to, to pre prepare himself for the crucifixion. Uh, was Jesus guilty of a sinful lust? No, of course not. Jesus was without sin, but there is sinful lust uh, outside of the confines of traditional marriage between one man and one woman, we should have no desire for inappropriate or sinful sexual desires. Uh, how do you approach that topic with people that you counsel or uh, students that you teach to counsel? That is literally the razor's edge when it comes into whether the person is a believer or not. The problem, Dr. Chaps, is if a person does not know Christ, or does not even know, I'll even go one step further. Other religions, let's say, because many other religions are very close in terms of honoring a marriage, honoring the, you know, the system, so to speak. If you're a believer, then you have leverage in that because you're then looking at it from, you know, the, the, the sacred of marriage, where you know a man and a woman leave their families and become one. So it's basically one flesh. So therefore, if you're operating outside of that, 
even though you have two people, you're still operating outside of one flesh, so you're violating your own body because you're violating the marriage. So at that point there, you are, you are operating in a sinful nature, and it, it gets really difficult to try to convince individuals because then it becomes their perception of, you know, what is right or what is wrong for them. And that is a very difficult time sometimes to get into um, where they said, well, you don't know what it's like to walk in my shoes. You haven't been down my journey. And it's like they're 100% accurately, just like we do not know the mind of the Lord per se, other than what we read in the word. But God's ways are greater than our ways. So we can kind of limit our belief system and our understanding to the word. But then even when somebody goes, well, why would God let this happen then to me that allowing my husband to cheat on me or my wife to cheat on me, is God condoning that? And then the answer goes, well, no, he's not. And then you get into that, well, then why would he let me be part of this marriage or have to stick in this marriage? And that is sometimes where it may be a cop out where it's like, okay, I can only explain it within the word and what the word says about marriage, what the word says about lust. But we have to always remember that God's, God's ways are a lot higher than our ways that we can't see the big picture. We don't see what's coming down the road. So what may be painful or hard for us to deal with now he always says our latter days are going to be better than our former days and he promises us he guarantees that he is going to make you know our crooked paths straight so he's going to straighten us out at some point okay i'm with you and i think we're on the same page as long as we love jesus and the bible um, but for non-believers there are also some nuggets of wisdom here uh, that would support uh, for the sake of the children, right? Having a mother and father in the home, uh, you know, providing a structure that, that helps, uh, you know, develop strong emotional health and family ties and love that is at the foundation of all successful parenting. Uh, Peter, mention your, your other books besides the one you held up there uh, and, and, and how do we find your stuff? You can find a lot of my books on my website. Actually, there's free books there. I did a whole series as a member in Canada here. Um, I've done a lot of stuff on anti-bullying as I'm an advocate for it. And you can find books on there I've given away literally for free. And some are based on um, a radio or TV show that I had done, uh, a fun show where we tell fun, really cool ghost stories where I was hosting a history show and the, my whole goal was to sell history because I love history, but to get kids interested and individuals that like good ghost stories, we would tell the haunted sort of stories, the campfire stories to get people interested. And you can find those on our site, just like you can find another book that I had written called The Lost Fountain, which is very Christian based. I had to, I, I had to change it for a secular publisher, but it basically looks at the goodness in kids and humanity where it's 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 about a boy that looks for the Ponce de Leon's fountain of youth just in order to save his younger brother who's got prejurious disease which is premature aging the fountain of youth the legendary it must have been in florida somewhere right uh, that's where old people go to retire uh, peter <laughs> andrew sacco.com is the website more right after this he's going to show us a music video he helped make this is pijn news Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back, the my pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever, my pillow 2.0. The best sleep just got even better. Whether you have a my pillow or not, you need to get the brand new my pillow 2.0. Call or go to mypillow.com now. Use your promo code, and for a limited time, when you buy one, you'll get a second one absolutely free. Over the last 20 years, with all your support, we've been able to not only launch the original MyPillow, but also the MyPillow mattress topper, Giza Dream bed sheets, my slippers, and the MyPillow bath towels. But there's so much more. In fact, we have over 200 products, and I'm so confident that you'll love each and every one of them that when you go to MyPillow.com now, you'll immediately receive a free gift valued at $20 just for checking out the website. No purchase necessary. Get everything from 
my pillow blankets, sleepwear, kitchen towels, mattresses, duvets, pet beds, body pillows, comforters, couch pillows, bathrobes, and so much more. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. And remember, just for checking out mypillow.com, you'll immediately receive a free gift valued at $20. No purchase necessary. This is a limited time promotion, so go to mypillow.com now. Powering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Peter Sacco. Peter, you are a uh, filmmaker and, and not an amateur. You've actually helped win awards with the Christian music video we're about to share. Tell me about your friend, Ray Lyle. Ray Lyle was very popular as a Canadian musician, iconic, that he actually performed you know, for the Juno Awards back in the early 90s. Absolutely huge. In fact, his award-winning songs back in the 90s, uh, whether he knew it or not, were basically downloaded into him from God, especially the song Carry Me. You know, use the logic with this. What do we ask for Christ when footsteps in the sand, so to speak? So Ray and I connected. We've been friends. And I reached out to him. And I said, hey, you have any new songs? Because he's a minister now. And he says, yeah, I do. And I said, you mind if I do a video to it? Because about seven weeks ago, I busted my foot. I was bored. My wife was getting ready to choke me. So I did a video. We put it out there. We put it in the film festivals. And it is just cleaning up worldwide. And... I saw the video unfold before my very eyes within minutes. Literally, God downloaded the vision into me, and Ray literally got the lyrics from God. So this is all God's, not us. Here's the song, Pure Heart, by Ray Lyle. Lest are the poor for theirs is the kingdom for those who mourn they will find comfort blessed are the meek for they will be given all the earth and blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what is right they will be satisfied and blessed are those who give mercy, they will have mercy. And give me a pure heart, oh God. Give me a pure heart, oh God, that I may see you. Thank you. 
So there you saw that song and that video are now winning all kinds of awards, especially in Ontario, Canada. Peter, take us out now. Um, somebody out there is inspired. Maybe they're feeling anger uh, and, and they need a word of prayer. Would you lead us in prayer? Absolutely. So for everybody listening, I pray that God is upon you right now, wherever you may be, whatever you may be going through. We all are our trials and tribulations and just know that our God, our Papa is a great father that brings us through. He's going to bring us through just like he brought the Israelites through the Red Sea to the promised land and he's going to bring us. He's going to bring you there and whatever you are going through right now, just remember this is how steel is tempered. We have to go through our trials and tribulations and the fire makes us stronger and I pray that God is upon you today and that you will reach out. If you do not know him, just reach out and ask Jesus Christ to come in your life and to be your personal savior because with him, all things are possible. And I pray that all things become possible in your life, especially what you are troping for or what you are praying for that will come to life in your life and you will see it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our guest has been Peter Sacco, his website, peterandrewsacco.com. Our website is prayinjesusname.org. Please donate when you visit. Call us toll free, you can give online or by telephone, 866-Obey-God, or just call for prayer, it's totally free. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.